Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1971-74 offseason look. This is the last group of carry-on players, uh, cards that are in the league for next year, 384 of them. Uh, they'll eventually we'll get to 640 cards for the league uh, in the draft and in free agency. Uh, and the question tonight, of course, is this is the fourth time we've done this. Does a player who's currently in the league get better in one of his other years? Uh, we did this last time. We left off with the Phillies, and we saw that there were three guys that were on the current Philly roster that could have been improved. Uh, for a Philly team that uh, uh, has the first overall pick in the draft, so if they were making, you know, you if you you most likely will make improvements. If you're trying to go for the ring this year in a short window, uh, for a re for a team that's building up, and Philadelphia would be building building up, bringing up making Larry Boa, Denny Doyle, and Greg Luzinski a lot better is still going to leave them short uh, in this timeline. So they might just want to wait. Uh, but uh, this also says if there's nobody else available that's draft worthy. Take Larry Boa's 71 card and bump him up to a 74. Take Denny Doyle's 71, bump him up to a 73. And take Luzinski's 72 card and bump that up to 73. That's if you can't find players in these years. So that's what this uh, analysis does. Team by team, we're doing it alphabetically by team. And this is the fourth and final installment. As we get past Philadelphia, we'll continue to the Pirates. And no surprise here, Pittsburgh doesn't find any of their guys getting better because they're already fantastic. You got Steve Blass's best year, Stargell's best year, Stennett's batting average best year, Hebner, Moose, Justy Hernandez, Richie Zisk's nice 73 card, even Jim Rooker's card. They're all having their best cards. And this is a World Series or bust team. Um, we know they're going to have some really good uh, keepers as well. Uh, let me take a quick peek at that so we know how good the Pirates should be. Yeah, Roberto Clemente, Al Oliver, Bob Robertson, and Manny Sanguian. All those cards need to be drafted into the, uh, redrafted into the league as their keepers. And that should put them into the World Series conversation that they've been out of the last two years. They just need to get luckier. They have the players. They're not playing well. Two years in a row. They just need to play better. And that's it for the Pirates. Not, not a lot you can do otherwise. Roll better dice, as I often say. All right, the next team, alphabetically, is Portland's expansion team. And, uh, of course, your expansion teams are a mixed bag around the league. There is one player, and I'm actually going to go in here, and I'm going to uh, give it a little more of a highlight. There you go. Brighten that up a little bit for you. Because that's Bob Montgomery. Let's take a look at his stats. Um, he has a very nice 72 card that's presently in the league. But don't settle, folks, particularly for an expansion team. Bob Montgomery's sort of a stratomatic hero in the 70s. It seems like every other year with Boston, he was tearing it up, backing up Fisk. He's got a 286, a 320, a 300, and a 349 in the decade. 72 year we have is 286, but in 73, folks, in 137 plate appearances, it's got the 320, 353, 563, 915. And when we take a look at the card for Bob Montgomery, here it is right here. Uh, my goodness, folks, this is a magnificent card. Uh, tons of strikeouts, which we'll, we can live with those because they're not double plays, all right? Uh, plus two arm catcher, but he's got homers on five and six both ways, and he has that high 333 average. This is exactly the type of splash your expansion team needs to make. And before you even ask, yeah, Bob, Mon Bob Montgomery playing every day would seem to be an advantage for Portland, but you have to remember, it's just one guy on this roster, and they still need a lot more guys to compete on an even playing field with your traditional major league teams. So every time you see an outlier like this who does well, be glad the card's in the league and it's on an expansion team so that the overall league gets competitive. All right, let's continue. The San Diego and the Padres, well, 
interesting team. Very strange team. 69 expansion, they were awful. But they had some good pitching, just horrific hitting. Then in 1970, the hitting was amazing. The pitching was awful. Real head scratcher there. And then after that, not a lot happens until Randy Jones, Dave Winfield, and Johnny Grubb show up. So there isn't really much change. Uh, Bob Miller's last good year, Dave Roberts' first good year, uh, Dale Ripple's on base percentage, uh, LeRon Lee's best hitting year, both Dave Roberts, the hitter and the infielder, both Dave Roberts have their best years in the league. Randy Jones uh, does, of course, get better, but it's not until 75, 76. So they're going to hold the 73 card for now. Next squad up, the Seattle Mariners. Only one player. It is Steve Klein, who uh, actually was a Yankee in an era where the Yankees weren't very good. And the Steve Klein's got a nice couple years here for the Yankees in 71 and 2. Look at that. He is pitching on three days rest with a whip under a buck 10, 296 and 240 ERAs. That is outstanding. And it's outstanding for a Seattle team to get him. So let's take a look at this card. If I can find Mr. Uh, if I can find him in here for you. There he is, Steve Klein. So here's the card. Now he's a starter eight, and he's one of these starters as a righty who's better against lefties and doesn't give up homers to lefties. So that's very good. Um, so you already have a 71 card, but if you want to get two years out of him right now, you can lock up the 72 card for two years if Seattle has nothing else going on in 72. And again, they may not because we have no idea what their farm system is going to look like since they don't exist. They're just getting leftovers from the rest of Major League Baseball. All right, next up, we have the Giants. And this is a nice analysis of many Giant players. Uh, this is a very intriguing team as Gary Maddox is still in the minor leagues. Gary Matthews was. We brought him up last year. Ed Goodson was brought up last year. There's a lot of talent. But somehow it gets mismanaged in trades and so forth, and the Giants just just don't do much in the middle of the 1970s, even though they brought a lot of young stars into the league. So, on a case-by-case, case, we have 71 Don Carruthers, and then we go to a 74 version. Let's, so let's take a look and see what the stats would say. Between 71 and 4, so 71, it's got a 403 ERA. 74 is, is ERA is three with a 121 whip. We could take a look at that and just see how much better the card actually looks for Don Carruthers. And let's see if we can find that one. There's the Don Carruthers card, all right. So this card, he's a relief four, starter five, really good against lefties. That might be worth it if your bullpen needs something like that. A righty who really gets lefties out. But he's vulnerable to righties. So you have to measure, do you really want that or do you want a balanced relief pitcher? Is it really worth making this guy better? Is he that much better to make it worth the trouble? what you have to consider because you lose a draft pick. Plus there's other guy in 74 to analyze. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's look at the other 74 gar guy because he's also a pitcher and it's Jim Barr. And Jim Barr, yeah, Jim Barr might be worth it because he can't pitch on three days rest with a 72 card. Let's take a look at that. So 72 Jim Barr to 74, what's the big difference? 72 Barr, He's got a nice card, a 115 whip, 287 ERA. Numbers are pretty similar in 74, but he can pitch on three days rest. And he has the fewest walks uh, of any pitcher, of any starting pitcher. And as you look at his card, he doesn't have any walks on his card. On 12 against lefties. Homer one, fly ball the rest. Single one of three, line out the rest on eight. This is an excellent, and a starter eight. This is an excellent card. This really is a great card. You have Juan Marichal on this team, but you know what? 
Juan's getting up there in age. What if you kick Juan Marichal down to the three spot and get Jim Barr pitching on three days rest? Now that we're in the early 70s, get him at the top of the rotation. By the way, you don't see an improvement here. Ron Bryan, I gotta show you these numbers. He's the number three starter. And I don't think he gets better, but check it out, folks. So we got 72 Bryant, 14 game winner. Next year, he wins 24 games and leads all of baseball. But guess what? He gets worse as a pitcher. <laughs> he wins 10 more games for a giant team. That's probably 10 more games better if I had to guess. But his ERA is up by more than half a run. His whip is up to 131. He got lucky. Wins. Very unstable stat. Third in Cy Young voting because of those wins. But take his 72. We saw this with Baltimore pitchers. Baltimore starting pitchers in 72, a year they missed the playoffs. Jim Palmer, Mike Cuellar are better than those four 20-game winners that Baltimore had in 1971, simply because Baltimore won more games. They got more support from their offense. So sometimes you have to look past the gaudy win-loss record. We're still going with the Giants because they have some 73 guys now. Bobby Bonds. So this is always kind of in the, in the uh, MVP era, I guess, for Bonds. He uh, never wins one. It gets close. So we have Bonds 71, but 73, a little better. Um, 900 OPS to 867. It's close, very similar for Bonds. And uh, here is the Bonds card. He's still a one minus four arm, but you know what? He's not playing center field anymore. So I'm gonna leave him in center field as a one with minus four arm as long as I can. So I'm gonna veto this Bonds. Actually, I'm even gonna do that right here. I've seen enough. I'm gonna change my mind. And the reason I'm changing my mind is is um, I want him to be a one in the center field, and he can't even play center field by 73. All right, so Fran Healy gets better in this same year for a catcher. Now they have Dick Dietz as the starter. Fran Healy was the reserve. He was a Royal uh, the whole time. Well, he was with the Giants, and he goes to the Royals. Uh, when he goes to the Royals, he can throw and hit with a little bit of power. See that got him right here. There he is. Minus one arm catcher. Giants still have the rights to him before they let him go to the Royals. Nice little catcher here. This is a great catcher card for this era. Minus one arm catcher with power both ways. Hits lefties better than righties. So that might be worth bringing, making that guy better. And the last guy is Ed Goodson. Interesting guy at a short little left-handed hitting third baseman, but I don't think he played third base the whole time. I think he's like a first baseman in one of these years. So Ed Goodson's got a nice 72 card in the league where he's just playing first base. 280, 739 on base. But if we want, we could bump him up to his 73 year where he's sitting 302 with a 784. And here's that card. Now, if you get this card, he's a third baseman. So that might be worth it because you have Willie McCovey coming back. You know McCovey's going to be at first. So Goodson's best chance would be at DH. At third base, all you have is Fuentes, who can play second, and you traded Ron Hunt. So I might want to say, let's do uh, an exclamation point there. Let's get this Ron Ed Goodson so he can play third base. Make Tito Fuentes a second baseman since Ron Hunt was traded in the offseason. You have no other third baseman on the roster, and you got rid of Jim Ray Hart, who's, who's no longer around. So a lot of interesting uh, things to talk about with the San Francisco Giants there. Next team up, St. Louis. Uh, we have Ted Simmons and Lou Brock getting a little better. Let's take a look at Simmons first. I think we when we were playing the season... We mentioned that he had a good throwing arm with his 71 card. And that was something that was interesting because he didn't really have a good throwing arm in most of this decade. He was, he was poor. 
almost to the point where you thought maybe he got hurt. Maybe he hurt his arm and never recovered from it. And that's why he was, wasn't good at holding runners on. But in 73, he's got a minus one arm as a catcher, which is great for him. And he's got power both ways and he hits over 300. So I don't think you'll, he'll put the defensive, the throwing arm together with a batting average in any other year but 73. He'll hit better than this. I think he gets 332 one year. Uh, and he's an all-star throughout this decade. Um, for most of the decade. But in 73, he's got a minus one arm. Might be worth it to bring him up to that. And Lou Brock, 74. Let's look at Brock. This is an interesting story. We know what happens here in 74 is one major category of stolen bases. So let's take a look at that. 74, leads the league in stolen bases and in caught stealing. Two in MVP votes. Again, that's all great stuff. But we love his 71 card. And why do we like the 71 card? His highest walk total, 76, in his whole career. Highest walk total in his whole career was in 1971, which would, of course, help Joe Torre lead the league in RBI in 71. So the 71 Brock is an 810 OPS, 74, 749. So what do you get? You're just gonna get the base stealing. So let's let's look at the Ted uh, to the Lou Brock card here. I'm gonna bring this up for you. Okay, so here's the Brock card. And right away, okay, he's a four. He's a plus one arm. Doesn't have power. And just, he has the same template. He's got the 157 card. Same template. But you know what he has in 71? He's got a walk on five, a walk on six, and a walk on seven. So he's gonna get on base more. If you get on base more, you can steal more bases. The question is, do you wanna go from double A to triple A? How much more help is that going to be in a, in a league like this? I don't know. I'm not sure. Remember, he's gonna play in a division with Johnny Bench and Manny Singh Yeen and, and Randy Hunley anyway. They all have great throwing arms. And again, against lefties, he's okay, but he's nothing special. So that's a tough one right there. I, I think I gotta come back with a 71 card one more year. And then when this card is up, then go to 74. But I don't wanna I don't wanna accelerate that process. Let the 71 card finish, because it's very good. All right, next up, the Rangers. Bunch of cool guys here. Uh, in 74, Paul Lindblad, who actually wasn't their property anymore, and Jeff Burroughs. Let's look at Burroughs first, since we know he would be your uh, MVP. So I can find old Jeff. Burroughs here. All right, so, 74 Burroughs is the American League MVP. But what's really interesting is that he's also very good in 73. It's not that big a deal between the two years. You see, we have this card, 279, 842 OPS. He improves to a 301 hitter. His, hit, his homers go down, actually. His RBIs go up, walks go up, gets the MVP. This could come down to defense. He's a three with a minus one arm. If he's a four with a 73 card, which I'm thinking he might be, that could be the deciding factor. I'd like to get a three in the outfield. Because frankly, the 73 Burroughs card is just as good, really. They're real close. Interestingly, if you watch the last video, we mentioned Steve Garvey going to his 74 MVP card. But Garvey was going from his 71 rookie, or 71 card, which was really poor, to an MVP card consideration. That's a no-brainer. In this case, you already are very, got a very high ceiling already, and you only get slightly better. So, And you have uh, this Burroughs card for uh, three years. So, Paul Lindblad isn't the property of... Uh, Texas in 74, but 
but he is the property now. Here's a 74 card for Oakland winning a World Series. And we saw in the World Series we just played, the Reds and A's played in the World Series, the 70-73 series. They really could have used help from the south side in the bullpen. Raleigh Fingers and Bob Locker were great righties. Their lefty setup guy was Rick Austin. So I think at this point, Oakland has got to step up to the plate and, and uh, blow the Rangers away and say, give us Paul Lindblad because he's our guy anyway and we'll give you blah, blah, blah. So I would trade Lindblad to the A's begrudgingly. Uh, there's a nice 73 Dave Nelson here. Let's see if I can find that one for you, folks. 73, Dave Nelson is an infielder. And the card we currently have for Nelson is a 71. Let's take a look at the, his stats. These are kind of interesting. Really, defense is the big key here for Dave Nelson. So he got a 71 card, hitting 280, 75 OPS. But in 73, he's an all-star, he has MVP votes, He's got a seven, he, his stats are pretty much the same, frankly. He steals 43 bases though, and he's a three second baseman. So the defense, he's got power versus righties and a double A stealer. I like that. I think that's worth the trouble. And you're probably wondering, what about Burroughs? And I'm like, it's just not worth the trouble. I mean, the Lou Brocks and Jeff Burroughs, they are already good. When a guy, or they're already great. And they just get a little bit greater. But Dave Nelson gets a lot better with the 73 card when you when you feel like you don't have, need a defensive replacement. He's good defensively. He's got power versus righties, and he's now a double-A stealer. Everyday player. Much better than this kind of fringe performance in 71. And then the Rangers have some 72 pitchers. Frank Lindsay and Denny Riddleberger. Take a peek at these guys. And they're down here, I believe. Okay, there's Riddleberger. Now, a lefty, but look at the, he's a situational lefty. No hits, just some walks on five, six, and seven. He gets touched up by righties, but in my league, every, you know, most lefties get considered to get into the league. And if you can get lefties out, you're definitely going to get into the league. Um, can this team have a situational lefty? If they can, you bump them up make him an upgrade because he won't be facing all these righties. The other pitcher, Frank Lindsay, is the opposite in that he's a righty who gets righties out, but he gets hit hard versus lefties. The situational righties um, aren't as important as a situational lefty because you face so many righties, obviously. So yeah, that's good. But there are enough left-handed hitters in this league that would crush this guy. I mean, this is bad right here. Homers, extra base hits, plus more hits in the five column and walks. So Lindsay's percentage against righties is, is high, and I can't guarantee that it, this he would perform as well with this card. It's very seldom I get a righty who slams the door in righties and is terrible against lefties and is in the league, like Lindsay. But the opposite that I just showed you, Riddleberger, this does happen more often because they're left-handed. The lefty that gets lefties out. All right, and then we have one more team tonight. I think just one more player. Tim Foley. Toronto Blue Jays uh, somehow got the, in the expansion draft, got Tim Foley away from the Expos. Foley's a steady defensive player throughout the decade, a good handler of the bat, doesn't strike out a lot, never hits for a big average. Great range at short. Good bunter, good uh, hit and run. Uh, if you look at his stats, they're really nothing special at any point in the early part of the decade. But he does get to be a steady everyday player. So we have a 71 card hitting 226. The next three years, all at the Expos, you can see he's the full time shortstop and he gets his batting average up to 254 by 74. Uh, the criteria will be what's his defense? How good a fielder is, is Tim Foley? And that's in, a, in the year of 74. Let me find that for you. There's the card. So he is a two at short. 
And he's also a, a presently a two at short, but he's got a high E rating. Um, but he's an A bunner, B hit and runner, and a C stealer. And as a right handed batter, he hits lefties better than righties. Of course, there's no strikeouts on the card. So, if Toron Toronto might want to help its pitching staff out by making their everyday shortstop a better hitter, plus a, a, a better bat handler, he can button hit and run now. So, expansion teams, you know, as we saw in this analysis, are going to make, pull the plug on more guys like this because they're so weak. Versus like the Giants and the Cardinals and the Rangers pulling the plugs on Bobby Bonds, Jeff Burroughs, and Lou Brock. They're not that important to do those moves, but for teams like Toronto, <laughs> something as simple as improving your defensive shortstop might go a long way to helping your team. So, well, that's it for the 384 carry on guys. Um, so, some of these guys, usually between a half dozen and a dozen players, get improved in every draft which leaves plenty of holes on the rosters which get patched up in free agency at the end of the draft and token round. So thanks for checking this uh, video out, and we'll see you next time.